Welcome to Sausage on a Fork, a podcast dedicated to the UK's longest-running children's drama programme, Grange Hill. My name's Neil, and in each episode, I'll interview a former cast member about their life before, during and after their time on the programme. Okay, welcome to the latest episode of Sausage on a Fork, and I am absolutely delighted to say that I have been joined for this episode by none other than Sean Welsh, who played Laurie Watson. Sean, welcome to Sausage on a Fork. Thanks for having me, Neil. Not at all, not at all. But what we'll do, Sean, is we'll start this episode the way we start every episode, and if you can tell us how you first got into acting. Um... I was thinking thinking about this the other day. I remember thinking that I was a lot younger than I actually was. Right. I think I was about 11. It it certainly wasn't in primary school. I I think I I definitely did a lot in primary school that was performance stuff, Uh singing and plays and gymnastics, ballet. You know, it was was always something. But it was so I think I felt like I'd done it all my life. Uh I hadn't really. Right. And I was a about 11 and my best friend from you know starting school was an extra on Grange Hill oh right okay and she went to this local drama school and I wanted in on it you know yeah and she she, she used to go it was Bowdoin's and it was a Friday night class and I went along with her once oh I'm going to join you know I said to my mom oh I want to join I want to go um and I did and I, I I can't remember what the classes started like my later memories are that it was full on um <clears throat> all day saturdays right. singing dancing you know the whole shebang uh-huh. um and they had a small agency there i mean they're, I, they're quite a big drama school now but it was relatively yeah. small at that uh-huh. time you know, everyone else was from sylvia young's anna shares and uh-huh. you know there was quite, i mean <laughs> I think it was me and Fiona Wade. Right. Came from Bowdoin's. Right. Okay. And um, yeah, I, I I remember joining the agency, having some headshots and going for the first audition that I'd gone for. I was about 12. Uh-huh. was a TV show called The Biz. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A, show, a short-lived show, I think, it had Paul Nichols in it. Um, that's all I remember. But right. I, it was an extra part in it, and it was a full-on audition of like dance and yeah. and stuff. And you know, um, I was an extra on that for I think about a day. Right. I mean, that's what the biz was, though, wasn't it? It was a yeah. bunch, or like it was like a performing arts school, if I yeah. remember it rightly. Yeah. I can still sing the theme tune. I won't. <laughs> but I don't know how. It's absolutely <laughs> it's ingrained in my mind, but. I then went to, and I own. When you asked me to do this, I you start to think, don't you? You yes. know, because I think <laughs> about these times, uh, you know, a lot, but you don't yeah. think about the detail, right? So, God, I auditioned as an extra. On right, Grange. that's how it happened, and I, I can't. I remember. I have a feeling. I remember a disappointment of not getting the extra part. Right. Okay. And I can't remember whether or not. At this, and I don't know how far about the conversation was, whether it was in the same phone call or six months later. Oh, right, they, okay. Well, no, because they want you to audition for a main character. Wow, right. And I have no idea what how long that disappointment lasted for. It's yeah. like a few seconds, but I remember feeling it. Um, and then, yeah, I went on to audition, I think probably three or four auditions, mm-hmm. um, you know, certainly one at White City, uh, potentially L Street. I I, I, I can't remember yeah. it. Um, and that was it, really. So I didn't really, I think definitely everybody who I worked with had done, you know, an episode on the bill or yeah. you know, or commercials. And, and, I, and I just hadn't. Right. And it, it wasn't that I was completely, you know, new to performance. I was yeah. just completely new to TV. So that was your first and job. Yeah, I mean, it, it was my wow. first job and my only TV job, <laughs> the <laughs> first and the last. Um, but I just think I did so, yeah, so many other things as a child that were, you know, I was always quite an extrovert. Yeah. Always wanted to be involved in something if there was a, a play. And I I think about this a lot. I, I 
I don't even think it was about acting. It was about perform performance. I yeah. can't, you know, I always, I think, you know, did I sit in my room reading lines? But never, right. you know, did I sit in my room playing keyboards and singing all the mm-hmm. time? Um, so I think I just felt like I'd always had it in me. Yeah. <laughs> but I certainly hadn't sort of, you know, been in drama school since yeah. I was six and, you know, done all the rounds on all the circuits. Yeah. So, um, and, yeah. And, and so, were you a fan of Grey Jill? Do you know what? It's, it's a funny thing. I, rem- I remember watching it a little bit. Right, yeah. And I thought, why, you know, was I, I don't even think my mum had a TV in the house when right. I was really small. Um, it, you know, and I'd, I'd go to my dad's at weekends, so that was, you know, it wasn't a weekend. Uh-huh. Thing. I just, you know, my mum worked full time. I think I probably was in quite a lot of after school clubs and ski. It just wasn't really a thing. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I watched it a bit. It was definitely, you know, it was really big. As I said, when my phone got apart, I'm like, I want in on this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is a thing. What? Yeah, you know, I remember watching it and thinking, "Well, you have no idea where it is, where it's filmed." You know, it seems it's you know it's so far away. Yeah, from everything you know. When I realised that it was an actual thing, yeah, that was achievable. You know, I certainly wanted in on it. But I think, I think I definitely, you know, these are the days where kids played out. Yeah, as well, you know, yeah. I lived on a really big estate in North London. Yeah. You know, and we kids played out. Yeah. Especially in the summer, you paid out till it was dark. And, uh-huh. you know, I did spend a lot of time in my room with with tape. I'm like Tracy Barlow from Coronation. <laughs> I spent loads of time in my room playing my tapes. My tapes. <laughs> Can I go upstairs and play some tapes? I know. I, know, I really <laughs> did. And I think, you know, I definitely have always been steered, toward, you know, more towards music and, you know, really loving that and spending quite a lot of time, you know. I had a, I had a vintage record player when I was about seven or eight wow. and I'd uh, go to Woolworths and buy the singles that came yeah. out um, and would, would go out and buy smash hits and stuff. So mm-hmm. I was definitely mo- much more music that, you know, yeah, culture than I was TV. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. All right. So, so you said like, you know, you, you got the pass for Grey Jill. And what, so uh, you didn't really watch it, but was there people there when you got there? Did you recognise them? Did you know any of them? They were, yeah, they definitely, it was definitely the older ones. I think, I don't know what year Laurie was meant to come in. I think it was the third. Yeah, yeah, it was the third, I yeah. Was the third. So the kids that were in the sixth form at the time, I knew who those were. I think I'd probably just watched it that bit younger. Great. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I, I definitely knew. It's so hard to remember who you looked at um and also I'm so terrible so many years later I'm so terrible with names um but Jessica Arnold I think was the yeah. character yeah I, I I really remember thinking when I met her that she was really famous yeah right yeah you know, just like you know they're definitely that kind of year group yeah brilliant um, I was fully aware and I definitely had I think Jenny Long oh was- yeah character in the year so I definitely had seen it the season before because I think I don't know how many years she'd been in it before me but I definitely knew her yeah um but that felt like there was a bit of a gang of especially when I came in with Ben for you know that year brought in some new people yeah so yeah yeah, definitely the older ones um and the teachers but I think they did a bit of a, a, a you know some quite a few fresh phrases there was new teachers that hadn't yeah. been before so yeah okay so so that was that was series 19 that was when you <laughs> joined and uh, it went on air you know that Neil <laughs> it, it, it went on air in, in 96 and so you were filming in 95 and the very first scene that we see Laurie Watson in she's talking with uh, Dill and yeah. Chris and She's wanting to know why Chris had left his his previous school because it was a bit weird that way. It was all like a, there was a big mystery around Chris, played by Ben Freeman, who, who you've mentioned. And <laughs> so I love this bit. She's wanting to know why he's left. So Dill asked Laurie why she would left her previous school. And can you remember? I can, <laughs> and, I, and I can because I it you know it stayed with me for 
you know, not not for my life, but certainly for my great children, <laughs> which was um, the mousy little madam line. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I, I, I feel like that was the audition line. Right. I, I, can't, I you know, I, I put a reasonable bet on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 20 quid probably but the, it was i'm pretty sure that was script in the audition right so it was it stayed with me and yeah. it stayed with me until now because there was a hand movement that went along with the line <laughs> yeah. was, you know all very embarrassing now when people find out but it makes you watch it on youtube <laughs> uh, yes but I, yes i do brilliant brilliant yeah it, it was because of emo they called her mouthy little madam, as you've said. And Laurie was convinced that Chris had done something really bad in his old school, like beating up the, the head teacher. But he was never given anything away. But he never denied anything that Laurie said. So that's why people were starting to think, oh, he's done something really, really bad. But then, because Laurie said she loved the good mystery because it gave her something to talk about. It's not like Laurie needed anything to talk about, because she would just no. talk anyway, wouldn't she? But then she was disappointed when Chris helped demonstrate in a badminton lesson, because she said, I thought you were hard. And right. <laughs> it's just him. He said he'd never said anything like that. It was just weird the way she was like, I thought you were hard, but he never, had, never ever said that he was, until uh, there was a lad in it called Rick, who was giving Chris a hard time because he was good at everything. He was new and his mates, like Arnie, was wanting to know about Chris and stuff. And right. Chris then squared up to him, but walked That's, away. I, I, now you're saying <laughs> it, I can remember it. But I, again, Rick then said, oh, that lad's all mouth. And Laurie said, no, that's me. I'm the one who's all mouth. <laughs> and I, I, just, I just love that. Like She said that Chris was much more interesting and walked off after him which was a little bit of a little bit of a precursor oh, there i do rem uh, i do remember that line and i do remember because it was it was it was an insinuation that she fancied him yeah yeah which i think the first time that was probably alluded to yeah much yeah. as she had an interest but that it was one of you know fancying him yeah like, yeah I definitely yeah that. and there's a bit where chris had refused to play in a badminton match and got sent to Mr. Robson's office because of his attitude with the teacher. Right. And Lo Laurie's watching through like had a gap in the door. There was a uh, lot of that, Neil. Yeah. <laughs> come on to that. But there was there was a lot of me peeping through doors and hiding behind walls. <laughs> was that part of your audition? <laughs> Honestly, the fact that I'm small as well, it's just, you know, it's just a weird little carriage peeping through holes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but then we find out Mr. Robson said to Chris that um, he told, he'd explained Chris's circumstances to Mr. Davis about not playing in the badminton match. And Laurie couldn't believe that he'd got away with it because, like, it turned out that Chris was from like a really like religious family. Yeah, and that was why he didn't have to. He didn't have to play because he was obviously involved in in things after school. But there was another club that Laurie went to when Dudley. Was running a chess club, right? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I remember that scene as well. And it, it didn't. It is the like, oh God. Uh, it makes me think. I don't of, uh, of the same that you wouldn't want to be in a club that would have you as a member. Yeah, that's the that one. Was, yeah. But that wasn't that. That wasn't because she was far too self involved with that. It was that she didn't want to be in a club that would have him as a member. Yeah, that was the one. Yeah, how do I remember that? God. Um, yeah, I mean, I love Dudley's character anyway. I just because because he's so different to everyone else. But like, yeah, he'd gone. She, she went to chess club, but there was no one else there. That's what it was. And he said no girls were allowed, and as you've just said, there, she wouldn't want. She wouldn't join anyway, especially if Dudley was the only member. Yeah, I'm impressed with your knowledge here, and I'm guessing that the people listening will be impressed with your knowledge because a lot of people <laughs> don't always remember stuff. <laughs> It's weird, yeah. I just, I, I think you sometimes need something to trigger your memory, and yeah. uh, you know, or someone to remind you of something that you just haven't thought about for, or haven't done for thirty years. Do you remember? <laughs> do you remember the bit then about recording a book onto audio tape? I don't. So there's a bit where Miss Carver was annoyed because hardly anyone had done the work on Huckleberry Finn, right? So she said, "So 
I hope you do better with the next book, which is called Moonfleet. And Arnie had the idea to record Moonfleet onto a cassette because he realised, like, he yes, remembered, it's so familiar. He remembered things better when he listened to them. So Laurie, Colin, Dill, and Arnie were, were all in Arnie's recording it. It was mainly Dill, but it took longer, a lot longer than they thought, to the point where Laurie actually fell asleep while they were recording it. And then Arnie's dad kicked them out. But they did get it done. But they had to cut loads of bits out. And they were, like, selling it off. And because of the cuts that they'd made to save time, people were getting, like, answers wrong. And they had limited knowledge, shall we say, of it. I don't um, remember much of this. I, I feel like I remember <laughs> a scene at a house. But if you're not in the scenes where they're, you know, Army and... yeah ever going off and doing that with the other people then you yeah. don't you've not been part you possibly yeah. not even in that day when yeah. they're filming it so i think yeah. that's where it is it isn't it's not that you don't remember it you just wasn't a part yeah. it feels like you're part of the story yeah actually you're not in any of the scenes it's quite funny because i've had people on this as you say it so this isn't really an interview this is you just telling me stuff and me trying to remember it <laughs> 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 but anyway, well, it's good for the old age. Neil. I mean, I mean that, I'm here for it. <laughs> that then led to the whole class getting a detention, and the detention was taken by the French assistant Christoph. Oh yes, because he was meant to be the heartthrob, wasn't yeah. he? <laughs> yeah, I think I was probably a bit too young to see him as the heartthrob. Right. Um, I don't. I mean, the first season I was. 13, most of it. I mean, I'm not saying I didn't see people's heartthrobs at 13 yeah. years younger, but <laughs> maybe it was very real that he was a real person rather than somebody in a magazine. But yeah, uh, <laughs> I definitely remember he was meant to be that year's yeah, yeah, yeah. pin up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but it, it's great that it, in the detention because obviously, like, there's other bits with him and he, he doesn't always have control of the class and the kids try and take the mick a little bit. But in this detention, none of the class could actually do the work. And Laurie actually said to him it was too hard. And he called her an imbecile. Obviously, he said it in French. I'm not going to try and offend That's any right. French people with the okay. accent. And Laurie said she could understand his language, even if he couldn't understand hers. <laughs> and you just think, right. oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh <And> dear. Then, <laughs> obviously, he got really angry with them tried to keep them there but then Laurie and a few of the others like barge past yeah that's barge right. past run out caught by Miss Carver and it turned out that they'd been given work meant for an A-level class rather than a year nine class right. <laughs> so that's why they couldn't do it and that was the that was the year of the production of Greece that's right um so Laurie wasn't, I wasn't in, in that yeah wh why was that I don't know that I mean because it would have been definitely something. I mean, they didn't. Ask, it wouldn't be a thing where they'd ask him. I mean, the scripts yeah. would be written before you've even come in to read them. Uh -huh. um, you know, so that would have been decided. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's. I mean, that would have been something that had been so up my yeah. street. Um, but it, yeah, it didn't. It didn't happen. I haven't said that. Laurie would have made a crack and result. But let's be honest, Paula. Uh, you know, I, I, I mean, yes. <laughs> as Rizzo, you, you, you're not going to get better than that, are you? Do you know what I mean? I think. <laughs> well, this is it. And I think also as well, I was very young that, you know, if I look at how I looked in that year yeah. versus the last year, you know, I was so young yeah. in that, you know, being 13. And Paul, you know, that she was different. I think she was yeah. probably about 18 at that yeah. time. Um, so, yeah, I mean... That's what works, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, having said that, there's a bit where Arnie and Colin are singing beauty school dropout. So right. Laurie, don't know if you remember this, but they're right outside the room where there's an exam going on. And Mr. Right. Ro Mr. Robson comes out and and tells them off, basically. It, but they're all like stifling the laughing. Can you remember if that laughing would have been genuine or or would it have been? I don't know. I mean, it's the shot of people in the class. You know, it's that's the thing. It's like, is that a scene that they've cut yeah. shot separately? <laughs> um, I, I don't, you know, sometimes you don't know if you remember something because you saw it in a script. Yeah. Or you heard it at a read through when everyone yeah. would be there or if you were a part of it. That's the bit where it's really hard to yeah. join the dots. 
Okay, so just mentioned Mr. Robson there. I, I, we need to talk about uh, Stuart Organ because obviously he, you know, Stuart recently uh, passed away. Yeah. What was it like to work with with, with Stuart? They, I mean, all the adults were really, you know, they were really nice, and you know, I have no idea how they put up with us. <laughs> You're not I mean, the first person to say well, that. Honestly, like real, I mean, not just, I mean, me in particular as well, but, you know, just just like really awful, yeah. you know, like imagine horrible drama school kids, which is like, you know, how, you, know the, 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 you know, he was absolutely lovely. Um, um, they, they were all really lovely. Yeah. I had really, I think... The, because of the way it was, is that you, if you wasn't in a scene with them or, you know, how you filmed, when you are children on it, you're taken back to a, an actual class to learn yeah. the teacher they've brought in or yeah. you're with a chaperone and you're take. So you don't really spend any time with the grown ups uh -huh. outside of on the set. Yes. Or, well, certainly I didn't. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it is it is hard to. I certainly didn't have any relationships right, or okay, storylines okay. with any of the teachers that would have given me that, or any adults for that matter. I mean, there was a lot of people who had parents uh -huh. part of yeah. the character, and I never did. Right. So I, yeah. I didn't really sort of form those adult, you know, in that series. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So we move on to the the next series, which was series twenty. But you didn't appear until. Episode nine in that right. series. Was there any particular reason for that? Um, I don't know. Um, it's just how the. I mean, it doesn't feel like. I mean, you used to. You'd come in and around the March time to do the read throughs of all the scripts, uh -huh. and then you'd do rehearsals for a few weeks, and then it would go into filming. Yeah, and your filming date, you know, would fall so ad hoc throughout the year till I think it finished in about November. Right. So think you feel like you had any more or less time does that yeah I get yeah yeah I don't yeah. think there's a feeling of not knowing you're in you were still called in yeah to do a read through or rehearsal for something that was maybe being filled in three months time or from yeah. recollection I mean that could be completely not true um I just yeah I just don't have any recollection of that being a thing right okay or what the storyline was for those first right. eight episodes that didn't include oh. me <laughs> okay, well then, so you were in year 10 at this one, and the big thing, I love this, was uh, street hockey. Oh, yeah, uh, right? I remember that. In the first scene, Arnie's there, and he, he he's trying to get everyone to, to, like, tackle him, and everyone sort of skates towards him, but everyone falls over. Now, could you actually skate? Because it looked like you could when you... It, it looks you know, like I... It looked like you could skate... Like when yeah. you started doing it, like I'm, I'm trying to remember when that type of skating was really popular when I was young, uh -huh. and I, I think it was about the year before, and right. people had those skates like at school. It yeah. was a really big thing. So I had skated. I wasn't terribly great at it, but also, you know, for I don't know how long, but let's say a month before that happens, um, you're being trained how to skate. Right. So it's probably, you know quite likely that if we didn't come into it until that or I didn't come into it at that point you know right. and I said, like I feel like I was still there all the time uh -huh. we were having those lessons and that training there was loads of it that went on right so okay. yeah a bit of yeah. <laughs> I've done it before and a little bit of yeah little fair bit enough of, okay and, and uh, in the camera before you fell over yeah <laughs> and then Another thing with Chris, Laurie convinced Chris to try out for the team. The Hill Hogs, as they were called, uh, was the name of the, the roller hockey team. Right. But do you remember sort of any of the filming of any of the games or anything? I like do that? I do remember filming the, the roller hockey scenes. Because um, there was a... I try, Now, my mind, I can't remember. We had a team, I think, come in and teach us. And right. they were a team from Essex that they were all sort of between 14 and 20. And they were right. a real team in a real league. Yeah. And I feel like we then went to go and see them and they did some training with us and we got tickets to their uh -huh. 
<clears throat> you know, and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so I, I definitely have real strong memories of that time. I just don't, I don't have any of the storylines. Right, I have okay. no I idea it. why. Yeah, right, okay. But does it go, they do actually end up uh, winning, the, right. winning, the, winning the final, winning the tournament. But then the street hockey sort of disappeared from that series. Then it came back later on, but that was sort of like the end of it in that series. Mm. Um, now, we talked earlier about the fact that Laurie fancied Chris, but it was never sort of like at the fore. It was never at the forefront. It was always one of those like things they like, alluded to. Mm. Um, whereas Joanna, played by um, Fiona Wade, did fancy Chris. And there's a scene where they're talking and then Laurie arrives. And... She's peeping round a corner again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> but the mouthy little madam made a reappearance because she Laurie then asks Chris, what did that tart want? <laughs> you know, just... Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't remember that. And, you know, Chris was like, oh, you know, you shouldn't call. You shouldn't be like that. And Laurie said she was sorry and that she did, she shouldn't judge her. What was it? Shouldn't judge a book by its cover or, or something like that. Because I... As we've said, you know, Laurie did fancy Chris. It was really evident because they all went ice skating as well. I Do remember, remember that. the ice skate. Could you? So, could was ice skating any easier or harder than? I had. Skating? I mean, I was never a brilliant skater, but I used to, with my friends at home, go to ice skating a lot. We didn't live that far from Ali Pali. Right. So we, it was something we used to do now and again. I certainly wasn't an expert. and I, But I do remember that because there was some sort of ridiculous. Um, red over the top coat <laughs> yeah. that wardrobe had bought for me. Um, yeah, I do, <laughs> I do remember that day because you're barely moving on the ice. To be honest, <laughs> it's <Right>. like, <laughs> um... oh, I, oh, I it's, well then the story would have been that I wasn't very good at it. Yeah, right, um... I'm rubbish, but I'm better than that. Right, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> um... I remember that scene, uh, and Chris was like flying. Like he's flying around the ice. That would have made the that makes sense to the story then. Yeah. Um, up yeah. And so Lottie then skates off and falls, hoping Chris would I would catch it, but it was actually Colin who That's caused right. it. I remember that. <laughs> and unbeknownst to Lottie, Chris had actually left with Joanna. And when Lottie went round to see to went round to Chris's house to see where he was, Chris had told his mum that he'd been revising for a biology test, but had told Laurie that he'd actually left the, the the ice rink because he was ill. And Chris's mum then mentioned this test again. And Laurie told Chris that there wasn't a test because Chris had left, at this point, Chris had left Joanna in his bedroom. So she, Chris was like sort of telling his, his lies and he quickly ushered Laurie out of the house. But, but it's, it, it's weird because Laurie didn't actually think that Chris did fancy Joanna, he, she thought that Chris fancied Jessica. Okay. And as you said earlier on, she started watching him from across the playground and, and round corners um, yeah. and then realised that it wasn't Jessica. And there's a bit where they went to the library. Um, Laurie went there and Chris was talking to Joanna about how she got out of his house. And Laurie went over to ask Chris if she could borrow a book and Joanna sort of glared at it. And Laurie again, the mouthy little madam, always came out when Joanna was around, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and she, she said, sort of saying, what are you looking at? But then there's also a scene where Mrs. Holmes was talking about Hitler. Right. L Laurie again said, yeah, we've got another one here. And you know when you just say, oh my God, I, I know you're a mouthy little madam, but let, you know, let's keep it down. Like, especially when Mrs. <laughs> Holmes is around. Like To be honest, Rachel Bell was the, the last guest. On, on the podcast he played Mrs. Holmes and like she's lovely but genuinely I'm like oh my god this is Mrs. Holmes I'm talking to her I need to be on my best <laughs> like I need to be on my best yeah. behaviour <laughs> well, you've, you've talked about the teachers did you ever feel like that around the teachers if they were playing someone strict um Rachel is, in, uh, is you're probably the best example of that right. <laughs> she's yeah. the loveliest woman yeah uh, but she you know, as well, you know, the characters that she's played over yeah. the years, you know, yeah. brilliant. And she's, you know, 
you you can feel that from her. You know, someone gives you a look. I mean, she, yeah, she she was she was brilliant. Yeah, um, yeah, de- definitely her. I yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so much any of the others. Right. It's weird because I in the uh... <laughs> when I, when I was talking to her, she could just turn that on as well. Yeah. Like she just turns it on. So oh, unbelievable. Yeah. She's got really um, authoritative voice, which is yeah. you know, brilliant. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think definitely of all of them, she would have been the one I was most frightened yeah, of. Right. And then this is all paired Laurie to work with Chris to do their homework. And it was about sort of finding out about each other. You had to find out like facts about each other because they were doing a thing about facts and opinions. And she was sort of, she was still stalking Chris at this point. Chris had told her that he, he didn't care about his whole work and he didn't care about Lonnie either. And as I say, she's still stalking him. She watched him go to Joanna's house to give her a present. And she was hiding behind the car at, at this point. Mm. <laughs> she's upgraded a little bit from like round the corners and in the corridor and stuff. And she's, she just saw Joanna's brother chase Chris away. And the whole work that you know, we just talked about Chris didn't do it because of his infatuation with Joanna. He just wasn't bothered. So Laurie had to make up facts about him. But the facts that she came up with was stuff like he was arrogant and uncooperative and self-centered and things like that. And they both got detention because Chris hadn't done any of the work. And it just it went on and on and on. And the kids were wondering sort of what was wrong with Chris. At this point, Laurie knew that there was a thing with Joanna, but didn't tell anyone. And until, I love this one, Laurie phoned the radio station. Okay. Is that, is that Dr. Fox? <laughs> yeah. I do remember that. I remember right. meeting Bill Fox. He, right. They brought him in. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, he, 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 he must have done the voiceover in the studio, but he came in, yeah. Wow. That's him. Um, because... I was watching that now. I was actually wondering. I wonder if he actually came yeah. in or it was just the uh, the voice yeah, over it. Did. Brilliant. And you know, Laurie then told the fact that she fancied a lad, but he was with a but he fancied an, an older girl. And she mentioned the fact that she that the Dr. Angel. So obviously the next day people realized that it was Laurie on the phone, but and then everyone's talking about this story. And she was the only one, obviously, as we said, who knew. But can you remember what song was played for Laurie? What song did Dr. Fox play? No, I have no idea. So he played Careless Whisper. because, oh, really? Yeah, but I think that's because, technically, I suppose Laurie had done that, wasn't it? Was a Careless Whisper? That she, yeah. That's, that's, that's she said. I was, hoping, like... I was hoping it was going to be something like, you know, <laughs> mid-90s and Britpop, but... <laughs> It, it wasn't at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. <Help me. laughs> so the story was obviously spreading around. Laurie told Phil that it was her who'd phoned in and, and that she'd phoned Dr. Fox. Can you, do you know what her reason was for phoning him up? No. It was um, the revenge for Chris not doing their homework and getting them a detention. That was their reason right. <laughs> for ringing Dr. Fox. Um but that she, you know, she said she regretted it and that she'd ruined everything. But it, th- this is where we see like a bit of a vulnerable side to Laurie because she sort of opened up a little bit saying that she thought there was something wrong with her because Chris was acting this way to her and not being very nice. But she still thought that like, uh, even after everything that happened, she still thought she had a chance with him and she wanted him to be this lad who, who he wasn't being at the time. Mm. It, and it's it's nice to see someone, you know, with that hard exterior becoming like in that, that vulnerable state. Yeah. Um, and then because Laurie then found Chris sitting in the girls' toilets after everything that had happened with, with him and Joanna. Right. Don't, don't know if you remember that. Um, and she tried talking to him, but he, you know, he was just blanking her and because as we've said, you know, he was besotted with Joanna. And she eventually got him to go up, to, to get up and go to their art lesson um, that they had with Mr. Brisley, played by Adam Wright. And I don't know if you have Laurie worked their charm with Mr. Brisley, because even though they were late, mm. she managed to avoid them getting in, getting into trouble. 
And Laurie went round to, to see Chris to see if he was okay. And Chris's parents thought that she was Joanna. She was the one who'd been sort of Chris had been after. And Chris came down and was actually quite disappointed that it was Laurie and not yeah. Joanna. And Laurie then told him what she thought about how he'd acted over Joanna and that she dad she she dad it with him. She was finished with him basically. She dad wanted not to do with him. But maybe that wasn't exactly true. Because the next series, series 21, when they were in year 11, things were a little bit different between them. And street hockey came back, as I said earlier on. Street hockey was a thing again. And after a practice session, Laurie and Chris finally kiss. Right. Can I ask, because I've never really asked any... Was it easy doing that? Like when it's someone that you've worked with for a couple of years and it's just amazing and all of a sudden... Um, yeah, I think definitely coming into that series, we was all, I mean, I would have been just turning 16. Ben was definitely at least a year older than me. Right. You know, there was loads of us who were, I think I'm possibly one of the youngest by, but, you know, but we was all sort of 16 to 18. Yeah. You know, it was a very... <laughs> You know, <laughs> a very different setup to you know series nineteen. Yeah, where you know we'd all buy series twenty one. That's the thing. By series twenty one, everyone looked really old as well. Everyone had sort of like you know, re- like puberty had massively hit everyone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everyone looked really different. So yeah, so they finally kissed, but obviously crispy and Chris was still sort of like quite distant about it all. And this was like your first year, I I think where you you first get like a big proper storyline yeah uh, uh, I think and Chris was still sort of distant about the kiss and and Laurie told him to have a nice life and walked off because he was just right. not giving her anything but then he asked her to go and see um, a film and <laughs> before they went to film Laurie took Chris shopping to buy a new shirt oh that feels vaguely because she said there was no way she was going to the cinema with him dressed the way he was. <laughs> just, right. that's, that's that's charming, that. like. And after the film, Laurie invited Chris to her house because her parents would be out yeah. late. And Chris refused and said maybe some other time. But he did walk her home. But is yeah. it, I feel like there is... There is a bedroom scene with them too. Yeah, le- now coming. later on. Is that later come? I was le- like, I'm thinking later on there is because she she invited them in again and promised. She said, "I promise to behave myself." God, I, 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 I don't think she would have done to be honest. No, but obviously Chris, because of the way he was, and you know his family sort of religious beliefs, he he, he said he wouldn't. I mean that all changes because he'd been with everyone on it. Yeah, got to me, and then he'd moved on from me to. I, I mean, think, um, yeah, because yeah, even then when know. he's. Even then, when, when, after he's first, after he's first taken Laurie out, Laurie sees him talking to other girls in school. And Lot and Dill said, Well, you know, he should be flat because he's your boyfriend. And Laurie was like, I'm not jealous. I'm, I'm not bothered. Mm. But she clearly was. And there was talk of a skiing trip. And, and Laurie was trying to get Chris to go on that because he'd have, he'd have some time away from home and all that together. And Chris's parents wouldn't let him go. So Laurie said she didn't want to go. Either, and there was all sorts of, like this was the year as well of all like the gangs and you know the knife crime. Colin had been beaten up, so Colin, right. Arnie, and Chris had got their hockey sticks and went looking for the lads who who had done it. But Laurie was like not wanting them to go and telling Chris in particular, like to 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 not to do it. But Chris had like told her to stay out of it, and Laurie had a right go at Chris for not listening to it when they came back. But then there was a an, like an art show at the school, uh, which turned into a bit of a rave. Don't know if you remember that. That's what I was going to say. The thing when when Laurie bought Chris that shirt, it was a green shirt, and he seemed to wear it all the time. After that, like, <laughs> <laughs> once you had something in wardrobe, you know, I mean, but, you kept getting put in but, it. But he wore it for school as well. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> and and this night at the, at the this 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 art show the rave he wore it for that and Lottie walked Chris walked Lottie home and when they got to Lottie's house 
this time he did go back with it. Right. Um, well, we didn't actually find out what happened this time. I Chris think it was implied, wasn't it, Neil? Yeah. But Chris if I remember correctly. Chris wouldn't tell his mates exactly what happened. And then Lottie was talking to Dill and said that she was going round to Chris's this time and that she was going to make the most of their chance. And Lottie went round to Chris's and they did. They did sleep together. Oh, so it was that time. Yeah. I, I, remember, I, I just have a, a, a one memory of being on a bed. But, like... For a kid, yeah. for a kids' TV program to but be was, showing that. Well, I mean, but, I mean, way, I, I, we, but that's I, what Grange Hill did. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. why people love it, and that's why it stood the test of time, and that's why it's been so, you know, powerful in yeah. the kids' lives all through. From you know, right from the just say no and the drug. I mean. God, what, what's more shocking, you know, drugs like that or, you know, your first yeah. experience? I mean, yeah. I don't, you know, it was always risque. It was all, that's that's what it what it is. Well, that's what it was. And that's always, I've said it loads of times, just how groundbreaking it actually was. I mean, yeah. the, the fact that they were showing that and talking about it in a kids' TV program, you know, really was, was something like. But then the next day, Laurie's waiting for Chris at school. Um, and wanting to spend time with him. But Chris kept either hiding from it or told that he was meeting his mates. And mm. at one point, she went to hockey practice looking for him. And I mean, no shame. Absolutely and, and, <laughs> no shame. Good. And then there's a... Arnie, Arnie and Colin told her that he, uh, he wasn't there. He was actually hiding in the toilets um, from Laurie. And Colin, when he got her from the toilets to where he was hiding, but Laurie saw them. And obviously was really upset, but undeterred, she still went to the cafe to speak to him. Um, and he was there with his mates, and he told her that he needed her not to be around them all the time and not to crowd them. And he was awful. I mean, and now I look back on it as a grown-up, he was really nasty. Me to I mean, that, that's <laughs> the... didn't have to look at him from series no. nineteen up to twenty. You know, he really is quite unpleasant as a character. I yeah. do. <laughs> Sorry, she told him to get lost and not to hide in the toilets this time because she he obviously didn't know that she knew that he'd been hiding in the toilets. And Chris spoke to Dill about it and told her that he needed space and stuff like that. And I, I've got to be honest, not I, I never took it to that extreme, but there was times as like a 16-year-old lad growing up. You if you were seeing someone, there were times when you did just want to spend time with your mates. Do you know what I mean? And like yeah. I mean, as I say, I never took it to the extreme of hiding in the toilets or anything like that. So I, I did have a little bit of sympathy for Chris when I started going through this series. By the end of it, I, I, I couldn't stand him. <laughs> and he needed every, yeah. he, everything he gets. He deserves it all. Dill told Chris that she'd try and arrange a meeting with Laurie because Laurie wouldn't speak to Chris. And rightly so. Rightly so, she wouldn't speak to him. And obviously, Laurie didn't want to play the hockey anymore because she didn't want to be on a team with people who she couldn't trust. And when Chris tried to talk to her, she said she was giving him the space that he wanted. And maybe he should move to Texas because there's loads of space out there, was the line. But she said, I love the fact That's that right. she I just picked that. Texas out. But then Chris told Laurie that he did, he did want to get back with her. And he agreed straight away. But there was always this thing then with Dill and Chris as well. Because Laurie invited Chris to dinner with her parents. And he wasn't sure at first, but he said he would go. But then that turned out to be the same day as his baby sister's name and day, like a, like a christening, basically. Laurie said she'd go with him to the party, and he said, no, it's just for family. But he invited Dill along, and he told Dill that he'd invite her, he'd invite her because he liked spending time with her. And... On the day, Laurie was waiting for Chris to go to the mums later on to have parents to have the tea with the parents. Um, but he never turned up at the cafe because he was at the party in his own house and he was actually kissing Dill at the time. Laurie turned up and Chris again went with Laurie and left Dill inside, like he'd done with Joanna <laughs> earlier on, like you said there. He he was an horrible character. Wasn't he? Yeah, it's horrible. Now I look back on it, I'm just like yeah, he was really unpleasant. And, <laughs> and there'd been love triangles in Glazio before. 
but this was a love square technically because obviously Dill was seeing Arnie at the time and right. Chris was seeing Laurie and there was all sorts of lies going on and Chris making excuses. Laurie started working out what was going on and there was a hockey practice where she pushed Dill over and instead of apologising to her, she just sort of like skated round her and glared at her. And after the practice, Laurie and Chris were walking home. Laurie said she wasn't well and left. And Dill was actually hiding in the bins outside Chris's house. Right. <laughs> and and she went into Chris's and cause his shirt was cause his shirt was all dirty, Chris said, Oh, we'll we'll get you a new one inside. And they went inside to, and they were just changing the shirt. Chris's dad came in. Dill ran out. Yeah, with well, his I shirt that, yeah. And Laurie's watching all this. Through a window somewhere. Yeah, so <laughs> w- watching all this. And as Chris ran after Dill, the front door was open. So Laurie went into Chris's house. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that and started trashing the bedroom. I remember that because I remember that being quite fun. And I, I yeah, I, I feel like they had a soundtrack to that, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Their yeah. music that was on at it the was. time. Yeah, now, I do remember that. Did you write the graffiti on the door, on the wall in, the, in his bedroom, or did someone else do that? Oh, I have no idea. Because? The sets would have been made. So right. do you mean something that I was meant to have written, but did somebody else do because, it? Because, right, I've mentioned this before in another episode. On the wall, the words liar and creep are written. But also, dickhead is written on, on there as well. Yeah, it uh... <laughs> I would be surprised. It's probably something I would write. But, right. <laughs> but, without a doubt. But um, the sets were made. You wouldn't have been able to come in and touch a set for continuity right. and stuff like that. I so I'd, be, I'd be very surprised if they said, oh, you know. Yeah. Be. But I just love the fact that Dickhead is written on, is on the this Is the filming door. of me drawing on the wall? No, no, that's not there. Then, then just... it wouldn't have been me. Right. It would have been okay. made as a set, I'm going to guess. I, I, you know, because they always say about the fact that there was no swearing in Green Jill. And, and it's literally only like just, a second. Just sex, drugs and rock and yeah. roll. <laughs> <laughs> but keep the swearing to yourself. <laughs> but there is Dickhead written in full view um, on the door. like, um, And obviously, then there was all the fallout then. You know, uh, Arnie and Chris had a fight. Laurie wrote, again, no... No swearing, but but Laurie did write. Dill is a two time and slag on the blackboard. We actually That's saw you write that, isn't one. it, Neil? Yeah. That's not nice. <laughs> and we yeah. actually saw you write that one, right? On there, and it was all about that. And Laurie did decide to go on the skiing trip in the end. And Colin and Dill were going to go. Now, before that, there was a trip to an artificial ski slope. Yeah, I remember that in Hemel Hempstead. That place, right? Too. Okay, could yeah. could you ski? No, of course right. not. <laughs> Up in a council estate in North London, no one went skiing. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's not a there's not a great deal of shots of you skiing. The ones that you are, you you sort of like in the background. You can sort of, you know it's you if you know who to look out for. But yeah, it's, no. it, there's, there's 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 nothing major happening in in those no. shots. It has to be I'm said. not that kid. <laughs> right, okay. And on the night of the skiing trip, the night they were going, Chris apologised to Laurie. But she said she wasn't bothered and just said au revoir to him and right. went and got on the coach. And she sat with Colin and then the coach pulled out and we never saw Laurie again. Oh, that. God, that's dramatic. Why was uh, that? Why? I don't but, remember filming that last scene at right. all. I mean, and, it, and you know, as I said, it wasn't always filmed in order as you went through yeah. the year. So it could have been done right at the start of the year. I have no idea. Right. I, but, I don't remember that scene at all. Was it your decision to leave? Um, yeah, I I thought about this again the other day and I I hadn't re- I really haven't thought about this for years about how that day happened, but um there used to be a thing where right at the end of the year you would get called or there'd be a lot of chat, you know. Yeah. Have you been asked to go up to, you know, whoever yeah. was, you know. The producer at the time, you know, because it was, um, I forget the first producer was Christine and then it was Stephen Andrew. Yeah. And it'd be, you know, have you been asked to go up there? You know, it's that. and I'm sure there was plenty of kids that, you know, those conversations just happened with their agent and them, you know. Uh-huh. 
but you know that didn't with me and um so you'd get called up which now looking back on it, it was ridiculous because <laughs> all of this chat of being like oh do you think they'll ask you to come back I mean I don't think anyone ever got caught and, and I look you know I wouldn't love because it'd be unpleasant but <laughs> I'd be interested to know if anybody came on and said, well, actually, they did call me up and say they didn't want me back. Right. You know, yeah. Like, if they called you in, that was because they wanted you back. Otherwise, that'd be terribly cruel yeah. to a child. You know, you just tell their agent or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and I went into a room, I think it was with Stephen Andrew, and I said, I, I don't want to do it anymore. Right. Um, and they said, well, you think about it. And I said, I don't want to do it anymore. Um, and they never asked me the third time. Right. So what was it? What 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 was your what was your reasons for not wanting to do it? Um, how long have you got, Neil? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh, like that is it, right? Okay. <laughs> no, I mean just just like I mean I didn't. It's really strange. Um, you know those the three years I did a real sort of key ages. Yeah. You know, I was 13 turning 14, 14, 15, 15, 16. And by the third year, you know, I was grown up and thought I was a grown up and, um, you know, was living my best life in the 90s. You know, when I was 16 years old and on Grange Hill and, you know, all sorts of um, craziness going on. Um, And I just... I don't know. I I just, I think I, I took it for, I definitely took it for granted. Right. Um, as I said, I, I don't, you know, I'd been for one show and I got it. Yeah. I'd never had that experience of not yeah. getting a show. Um, and I didn't want to do it anymore. And I thought, well, I'll just come back and do it whenever I want. I mean, I, I genuinely, the, I spent most of that year, you know, going out. Yeah. All I wanted to do was go out and be with my friends and go out yeah. to, you know, nightclubs. And, yeah. But I sound really old, nightclubs. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, that was, and, you know, and it was the 90s as well, you know, being 16. Yeah. It wasn't like 16 then, you know. I mean, I remember being in a nightclub in King's Cross and one of the production members being in there going, Sean, what are you doing in here? Wow. He's like, just <laughs> turned 16. It was crazy. That, like, they were really crazy times yeah. for, you know, a 16-year-old. Um, I just wanted to just, I didn't like, I wasn't very good with people telling me what to do. Right. Um, I was quite hard work. Yeah, right, okay. I, I okay. was quite... <laughs> Yeah, to anyone who knows me, well, they'll, they'll attest to that. I, but I, I was really hard work. Right, it's okay. You know, okay. I, had, I had a lot of problems when I was young, and I was, you know, I just I just couldn't be told. Right, it's okay. I wanted to do what I wanted to do, and it yeah. didn't involve being on a schedule and being told what to do every day. Um, and, and it's weird, because I think about it now, and I think, did I just not care enough? Right, I get you, yeah. You know, it's a bit like I'm a massive football fan and I'll right. watch football documentaries endlessly of, you know, you know, you know, Gazaru or, you know, who like who never went out of his match would kick a ball for hours and hours. Yeah. These kids wanted it. Yeah. And I look back and I think, did I really want it? Right, I get you, yeah. Because I, I don't know if I if I did. And I think you know, I always loved singing. I all I loved the acting. I loved the dance, and I uh-huh. think it's I think it's the performance that I love. It's you know musical theatre. It's 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 all of those things. I don't think I was ever, you know, wanted to be an actor. Right, I get you for yeah. sure. And I oh. think I probably wasn't good enough at any of the disciplines. Right. I think combined. Yeah. <laughs> it was, you know, not bad. But I think I probably wasn't um at the a hundred percent of any of those disciplines right. that made any of those disciplines a a, a viable career. Right, so I get you. Yeah. So also, did you did you keep auditioning then for stuff? I did well I so I I stopped graduating when I was sixteen. 
I went back actually the following year and did some director stuff with them. Ah, oh, right. Okay. They were bringing in their new directors, and they'd brought back some of the old cast to do. Um, right, okay. You know, some scenes and stuff to help up and come in directors. Ah, oh, right, okay. I went back and did that, um, and then the following year, year I did a film called Goodbye Charlie Bright. Yeah. Now I want to talk to you about that because right. when I was looking at that, and, and you know, I've, I've I'd got crazier by that point. Neil. I've what I've watched. <laughs> I've, I've watched bits of it, right? I've watched bits of that film. You must have had a ball making that because oh, you know the, the cast just, cast looked amazing, but just the whole premise of the story and everything, you must have had, and, and when it was as well, you must have had a ball making that film. Do you know what? It's uh, absolutely... I just didn't know it when I was doing it. Right, I get you. I just... I was just a little shit. Like, it okay. really was a real little shit, and uh, I and and then not certain, and not in a spoiled way, not in a you know, you know, yeah. I wasn't a spoiled. I, I wasn't like Veruca Salt that kind right, of. Thing. I, get, yeah, I yeah. didn't have that upbringing, but I just, yeah. I just thought, well, this is what I do. I get yeah yeah. So I just I never and I don't, but then I don't know many people of that age that would have truly been able to take in what they were doing and uh-huh. actually realize how i remember thinking at the time it was on such a different level to tv yeah Bill. um you know just down to the money right the, it's okay you know it was different completely yeah. different um you know you had things like trailers and you know it it was it was completely different but again i think i just you know f- felt like i don't think i felt grateful to be there yeah, right, okay, I get you, yeah. I I think I, you know, I definitely took it for granted. And I definitely, um, you know, by that point, I was 18. And I was, you know, I was living on my own. I'd moved right, out. Right, it's all home. And, uh, you know, the partying was even crazier. <laughs> yeah. Like a low-rent Drew Barrymore, Neil. <laughs> That's what I was. <laughs> The lowest rent of Drew Barrymore is how you could but, sum you know, up that... my, my childhood. <laughs> that... um, yeah, w- without the comeback as well. So, right, it's okay. <laughs> and, and the glamour and all on all sorts of things. But what, 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 what I love about that film, Good by Charlie Bright, is it's so British because the cast is like, it, it is unreal, like Phil Daniels and Jamie Foreman and David Oh, Fugles he's brilliant. And, yeah. You know, David Thewlis, especially, but like Paul Nichols was there and Brinsley Ford and Nicola yeah, Stapleton. Brinsley, and, yeah, it was like Danny Bear, um, Danny Dyer. Yeah, Danny um, Dyer, yeah. It, 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 it was brilliant, you know. I mean, it wasn't, I mean, it was probably only eight days filming. Right, really? Wow. Did. Yeah, well, I, I think there's only in four scenes. Right. Um, four or five, yeah. Four or five scenes yeah. at the most. So it's eight days filled. But I, I love that Janet. Janet, your character. If Grey Jill did have swearing in it, Janet and Sean would have been, you know, like sisters. Would they? I, oh, I, think, I know. Like... <laughs> and and then that's it. And it was like, you know, it was a bit. You know, people talk about typecast and, you know, those kind of roles. I felt like I could get those kind of roles, and yeah. um, you know, and they were there, and that came out. I mean, funny enough. I don't think I don't know when that came out. I've, got, was, I've, I've got 2001 down, and but it was filmed in 1999. Right, okay. So I was 18. So I'd done um, 97 Grain Chill, 98, not much, 99 <laughs> Good Budget. Well, <laughs> loads of stuff, just not acting. Um, no, it's okay. 1999 um, was that. Um, yeah, and it, it wasn't that that long at all, but it was, yeah. So that was, that's that's the last thing that IMDb have got you down as. Was that the last yeah. thing that you did? Yeah. Right. Um, and I never, it's, it's, a, it's a, it's a, I just never tried again. Right. I okay. think, I mean, yeah. And it, I mean, by the end of, yeah, I mean, by the following year, I was pregnant with my first son. Right, okay. Okay. Who's 23 now. Wow, right. Um, by the following year, I was pregnant with my second son. Right, okay. 
So I have two grown up sons and, you know, um, I did. It just felt like I had this time to, you know, go out and get a proper job. Right. Okay. Make sure they were looked after and that I could just, I'll just go back to it. Right. Okay. And I just never did. Right. And there was definitely times in my 20s where I wanted to go back to it. Um, you know, desperately wanted to yeah. go back to it. Um, you know, heartbreakingly wanted to go back to it. Um, but I never, you know, I can't honestly say I tried everything I could have to to yeah. do. I mean, I remember being at the the premiere of Goodbye Charlie Bright. And at that point, I'd sort of left my agent at the time and got was given a couple of cards and from memory never bothered to call them. Right. And I just didn't give a shit. It was really, you know. Yeah. If, yeah. Yeah. Do no. you think do you think you'd ever would go back to it? Oh come on, Neil. <laughs> no, I'm 42. No, I mean no, I mean I do look. I laugh about it now. I just don't I think I've satisfied myself with I just wasn't good enough. Right. It's okay. Um I think I mean, maybe that's a little unfair. I, I haven't, you know, I hadn't tried. Um, I don't know. I, I think what I miss perform. I miss the arts. Yeah. No, I love the arts. I don't wake up every morning, you know, thinking, God, I wish I was going to a film set like right. it affects other people. I don't care that much. Right, so I get you, yeah. Um, not, you know, I just, you know, I, yeah, it's it's the arts that I miss, you know, and I love the, you know, anything that's, you know, creative or that, um, you know, that I'm doing or that I can get involved in. I mean, what I do now, I yeah. work with creative people all the time. Right, okay. And I think that's probably what keeps me in it. You yeah. know, I don't want to do what I do in a bank or anywhere like that. That just wouldn't be me. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, no, God, it is no. I'm sure it's too late. Surely, is it? No, it's never too late. <laughs> Uncle, Uncle Albus, Uncle Albus, and only fools and horses. He, he was late, he home, was, wasn't he? He, he yeah. was the bank manager, wasn't he? Until he yeah, was. He was yeah, he was. He yeah. was. Okay, so so what do you do now then? Um, I've been doing finance for about twenty years. Um, oh, same sort of job as Buster Merrifield. <laughs> <laughs> Buster Merrifield and I got a lot in common, including the beard, Neil. Um, it's, 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 it's hard upkeep. Um, I, yeah, I do. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, look, it's, it, I, I do finance and, and, and operations and all that sort of stuff, but I've worked for creative agencies for 20 years. Right, well, okay. Um, and I've worked in advertising for the past sort of six or seven years. Um, and I love it. I, I I absolutely love it, and um, so I get to sort of uh, be not a part of, but I get to you know deal with productions all the time. Yeah. Uh, you know, I do the production finance and, and and all of that sort of stuff. I mean, I I have been known to do the odd voiceover for a pitch. So all right, so okay. uh, <laughs> some of which have been won, Neil. <laughs> so, brilliant, so brilliant. Uh, yeah, you know, so little bits and pieces like that. You know, my dad's a musician. I you know occasionally will go and do a few songs and do some bits with him, or go to the studio with him. I like to. I, th I think if it that was all taken away from me, then right. I wouldn't cope very well. I get you, yeah. I think I tried to definitely make sure that there's people in my life or things that I do um, that keep that creativity that I enjoy going. Uh -huh. Yeah. And that, you know, that that need for that. Yeah. But a lot, you know, it, it's, it's definitely much more music than it is acting. Brilliant. Um, you know, I've I think for the well, not think for, I mean, for the first time. You say you know you're never too old. I I wrote a couple of songs, a couple oh, right. of, and went into the studio and recorded them. Brilliant. Just you know, because I thought, oh well, that might be fun. Can we hear them anywhere? Well, maybe. <laughs> right, I'll send so... them to you, Neil. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll send them to you, Neil. They're not great. I mean, you know, as I said, I'd be doing this for a living if it was that good. Yeah, right. Not, <laughs> I mean, that's not true. There's, there's lots of people who are very good who, you know, I know lots of people who are very good who are having to do different other jobs, just right. you know, as such as life. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah so I, I but it doesn't I don't feel the burning need to do it every day right so yeah you know I sometimes think I want to write you know a tv show and I mm -hmm. just don't get around to doing it and I think if you really wanted to do it you'd make the time I make time for other stuff yeah I, you know I yeah. make time for Arsenal <laughs> right. you know every week yeah I put that time in <laughs> so, no, just, just, you, you've got to it doesn't matter who your team is. You, you, you've got to, you know. Uh, listen, I, have, I I make time for Everton every week. You know what I mean? And we all know how well, terrible they are. <laughs> so I suppose if you want to do it, but yeah, you never say never. I think one of the things is funny is you know you never know. You never know what's coming le next. I'm pretty relaxed about it. I'm yeah. just you know I like what I do. I don't know. I think. I think you always hold that little bit of hope. Yeah. Hope's the wrong word. Um, you know, just there's something where you feel yeah, like... You've, yeah, you've got to maybe have Maybe it's that not over. Little maybe, inkling, yeah. No, maybe yeah. it's not over. Maybe there's something. I mean, I definitely... One of the things I absolutely satisfied myself with, I never would have been able to carry on. The, the way I was when I was young, had I have carried on and got more parts and... I would have been not right. You know, I would have been... Even more like Drew Barrymore, is what you're saying. I, I, yeah, there, there would have been some gutter picture on the front page of The Sun by the time I'd made it to EastEnders or whatever. You know, I really wasn't, you know, I don't think I would have... Yeah, I just... It, it wouldn't have been right for me. I definitely didn't have the head to do it then. Right. Can I ask, though, because you were saying about that, at that time and you were out all the time, was there... Was there much like public reaction to you saying, "Oh, you're, there's the girl from Green Hill"? Did you get any? No, because like that, again, like... it's a children's program, and you are in adult establishments, right? Okay. You know, so I don't remember. I a funny one. I, I remember people would go, "Oh, what do you do?" And you go an actor, and they go, "I bet you're out of work." Then you go, "Well, I know," uh, uh, <laughs> which is always you know a good fun. Yeah. But it was adults. You know, they wouldn't know. You know, Green Hill or anything like. I, I assume they're not watching right. Great Show. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't yeah, know. I mean, if it had been sort of 10 years earlier, it might have been. Oh, because... 100%. I mean, yeah. I think that it was a lot years before it was watched by a much bigger audience. Uh, but by the time you were in it, you know, your cable TV and kids' channels and, and all that, and telly was different then by then, wasn't it? So. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, so I, I didn't really get that at all. Um and I think even with the Phil, yeah, no, I, I've not really, yeah, yeah, I mean, you have the one odd, you might be in the West End or something like that, or someone whispers something, but it really is not a, you know, a, a whatever. But Does, um, does anyone ever recognise you as Lonnie? No. No, never, actually. No. No, no. I mean, I, I think you, you still, you've still got that look, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Even with your glasses on. <laughs> oh dear, the glass. Oh no, stage for you. Oh. Um, no, they they don't. I, do you know what? The one thing that never escapes me is that it follows me everywhere, and I'm not quite sure how. So I can come somewhere to you know to a new company. Yeah, and someone will find out. Right. And okay. it will be because. They've either Googled your name to get a headshot of you for the agency yeah. or whatever it is, but it will come out and right. you be shamed. I mean, I was at a, <laughs> a design agency years ago and I remember when I left, they had filled the whole downstairs with pictures of me as Laurie Watson. <laughs> Absolutely awful. Like it was just so, because I think the bit I find most difficult about it, it's not, you know, I'm incredibly proud of that. Yeah. Um, I think you can't not be. Yeah. I think the really difficult part is the, well, why don't you do it now? Right. Yeah, I get Yeah. It's, and it's not the, you know, it's not for me that, oh, that you tried and didn't make it because that sort of isn't the case really. And even if it was, I think it's just a really weird thing to ask someone. It's a bit like, you know, it's like how long have you got for yeah. why – that's not my career anymore. Yeah. Just this a little bit, oh, do you think you'll ever go back? Well, I, you know, and, and, and apologies, Neil, I feel like I know you've asked me that question, but we're here for that exact reason. Yeah. 
But when you're just asked that, well, why don't you do it? You know, do you think you'll ever go back to it? I mean, what, becoming a TV star? I yeah. don't know. I mean, how? <laughs> yeah. No, I no, I mean, probably unlikely. It's just such yeah. a hard question. Put yeah. you, no, 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 I, no, I appreciate like that. Yeah. a mad way. Yeah. Okay. Well, we are sort of coming towards the end of the interview. Sure, I nearly called you Lottie then. Uh, we are, <laughs> so we, we are That's all right. My dad used to do that a lot when I was young, very loudly in the street to embarrass me, which he thought was hilarious and I didn't. Well, so, <laughs> so, right. So we are coming towards the end, Sean. And I've got the, uh, the same few questions that I ask everyone at the end of the, of the interview. So over the last couple of years, there's been a bit of talk about a Grange Hill movie in the works. Uh, Phil Redmond has written and Sarah Sugarman, who was in Grange Hill many years ago, is going to be directing it. Kellen Jones, who was in it as well, is involved. Mm. What do you think of the idea of a Grange Hill movie? I think it's brilliant. I'd, I'd be interested to know in what, you know, when it's set, you right. know, yeah. is it set now? Because the world's changed so much. I mean, I think the last film I watched that's sort of about a school setting would be, you know, especially in, in London was Kid Right, which is yeah. a great film. You know, but if you think about what that's about and how yeah. scary that film is, yeah. um, you wonder where Grain Chill sort yeah. of fits, like how that fits in. Um, because those things were really shocking when we were growing up, just aren't shocking anymore. Yeah. You know, nothing shock. We live in a world of social media where nothing's, you know, really hidden anymore or taboo. Yeah. So for me, it's like, well, what what is it? I mean, yeah. I just, I don't, it's probably more the opposite of what it was before, which was to sort of break you know, barriers and sort of cover the subjects. I think you that's you haven't really got anywhere else to go yeah. with that. Yeah. But if you were asked, I know I know you because I know you've 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 kind of hinted towards this uh, during the interview. If you were asked, would we see a return of Laurie Watson? Um I I would think unlikely. <laughs> right. So okay. um, I would I would think unlikely and look, look, that's the other thing about acting right is that, you know, depending on what type of job that you've got, you can't just, you know, I've spent the last 20 years building a career that's yeah. not that, you know, and I, you can't just stop doing that to go yeah. and do, you know, you can go and do a couple of weeks, but you can't take six months. That is, you yeah. know, these are life's challenges, Neil. These yeah, are yeah. <laughs> you know, I definitely, yeah, all, you know, always anything like that I'd always be interested in. Okay. All right, brilliant. Okay. So, other than Laurie Watson, who was your favourite character in Grange Hill? The, the characters or the actors? The, the character. The character. I find that question really difficult because I know the people. Right, okay. <laughs> and as I said, I, t I sort of didn't massively watch it all the time. Yeah. Nor really when I was in it. Yeah. Right, so cut. Um, so I sort of that's. I mean, I didn't like the <clears throat> not that I liked the character, but the Ian Robertson. Yeah, the sure. character he yeah. played. I mean, I I remember being so blown away at the maturity of his acting. Yeah, I mean, it really was next level. Yeah. It, it it certainly wasn't anything I'd ever seen on Grange Hill uh -huh. outside of the adults. Yeah. Um, and I just remember the cat, you know, how he did the character, whether or not you liked that character or not. You know, yeah. he's a likable character, if I remember. No. But he's a character nonetheless. Yeah. And like a baddie. Um, he, was, he was brilliant. But that, that shows you, though, doesn't it, how good he was because... Because Sean was so unlikable, he was he was such a horrible character. I mean, that's just testament to, to to Ian Robertson, isn't it? Yeah, he was, you know, and you could see the thought in his face, and his face told a story. You know, he was an act. This was someone yeah. who, go, this is an actor. Yeah. Um, 
and he and and he was absolutely brilliant. Okay, brilliant. In that character. Yeah. Okay. So you just said there, you know, you found that hard to answer because you know the people. So can I ask, are you still in touch with anyone from Grange Hill now then? Um, I see Rochelle Gad. Right. Um, not that often, but uh-huh. we are in touch. So right. it was definitely large parts afterwards where I I didn't have contact with probably anybody on it at all. Uh-huh. Um, and then I got back in touch with Ra- Rochelle, got back in touch with Aidan and Peter Morton, oh, yeah. who I have, you know, so much time for. Mm. Um, and I've met up with Rochelle a couple of times in the last probably five years, um, and I'm hoping to see her again in the summer. Brilliant. Um, but, yeah, n- not huge amounts of people. Okay. All right. Okay. So we just you've just talked there as well about you know the fact that you did like Sean Ian Robertson's character, but if you couldn't have played Laurie, was there another character on the program that you would have liked to have played? Um, it's a good question. <clears throat> I'd like to play this whoever got the grease part. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> um, I mean, Fiona Wade had great storyline. Yeah. I think she had, she she definitely had a storyline that could, you know, had, um, you know, di- different levels that she yeah. could go to um, within that. Um, yeah, pro- probably her. Right. I mean, it all, leads, all roads lead back to Chris, don't they? I mean, <laughs> yeah. in some way or other, you end up being Chris's girlfriend. Um, yeah, no, she had some great storyline. I'm Pretty sure she did the Grease one as well, didn't she? Yeah, I think she might have been involved somewhere. Like She was, because she was, Fiona is great, uh, well, absolutely amazing singer, I'm sure, I'm sure right. she, she was, you know, um, a very big West End star, so she, uh-huh. she would have been in it. So, and yeah, anything that involved being in Grease, absolutely gutted to have not been in there. <laughs> Grease. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. So, so the final question then, Sean, is, why do you think there's still such affection for Green Hill? Um, it had it had all the right ingredients at the right time, you know. It's like anything. It's like why is there still such affection for Only Fools and Horses? You yeah. know, it had. You know, it. You're at a time where, you know, the the big years really, are, as you said, pre cable TV. Mm-hmm. Um, it's on the BBC. It's Phil Redman who is, yeah. you know, <laughs> Phil Redman. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it just, it was, it, people have, it's like, I said, for me, it's it's more music. Yeah. And it's, you know, the affection I might have for, say, Blur. Yeah. Oasis <laughs> is, you know, because that's your... People love nostalgia and they yeah. love things that remind them of when they are young. And yeah. as I said, I don't think a lot of adults watch great. I mean, it probably was quite popular among adults in the very early years, but mm-hmm. for the majority of it, it's a kid's TV show. And we're all nostalgic about the things that we love. Um, and it was a good show. And yeah. it was written and people, you know, remember the things that they tackled in that. And there will be so many instances of people identifying with a character or mm-hmm. something that they they went through on that and that impacted in their life in a certain way as you know we talk about all the time now having you know people to identify with yeah. it's so important yeah definitely um, that people would have identified with you know characters and things they were going through yeah had those sort of, you know, had a feeling that somebody else is like them and how important that is when you're young. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, Sean, thank you so much for coming on uh, and, yeah. and giving us your thoughts, your your experiences on, on your time on Green Jail. It's been great, really great speaking to you. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I have to ask you this question because I asked Kim Benson when she was on, are Arsenal going to win the league next year? Oh God! Well, look, <laughs> five points then two points. You know, so you can. Uh, uh, to be honest, I'm more. <laughs> uh, my head is more. Is our England going to win the Euros? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> you know, which is probably a hard no. But uh, yeah. Yeah, 
Do you know what? I, I hope so. Life's a funny thing, isn't it? I mean, it feels like yesterday that we won the league and actually next season it'll be 21 years. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's, you know, you think, well, if they don't, when? Yeah. Uh, I'm, my I'm, sons have never seen it. I'm keeping quiet on the on trophy wins as an Everton supporter. I'm not. I'm not talking about that because that's it. Yeah, even you might get a, you might get a cheeky FA Cup. Neil. Yeah, well, blimey, Who knows? thirty years next year. Anyway, uh, but yeah, no, honestly, it's it's been great talking to you. Yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed it, and thank you so much. It, it it's been brilliant. Well, thanks so much for having me. Anytime. Not, not at all. And to anyone that's listening, I'll speak to you next time. Cheers. Thanks. Bye-bye.